I'm very honored to be here to share my story with you and tell you about the repression on Iranian women and the brutality of the Iranian regime. As an Iranian woman, I have experienced violence and inequality in every aspect of my life. In Iran, women don't have the right to choose who they want to be. Women are not treated as free individual human beings. Iranian women have been deprived of many rights by the Islamic Republic of Iran for the last 40 years. They face violence every day because of the compulsory hijab law, which requires women to wear a head, uh, to wear a head of scarf in public, even if it goes against their will. For the last 40 years, the Islamic government used hijab as a tool to repress women, enabling their special forces and followers to abuse, violent, and subjugate women. Knowing about suffragette movement and believing in civil disobedience and peaceful resistance as powerful tools to affect real change, I knew women's rights activists didn't get anywhere in Iran because they were alone scared to speak out, knowing the, um, uh, repercussions, knowing the repercussions. As an ordinary woman, I saw myself and uh, my, story, my story in these activists and wanted to be part of a bigger cause. So I decided to break my silence. I decided to do something, and I joined the White Wednesday civil disobedience movement to, op uh, to oppose Iran's compulsory hijab law. A campaign started by Masih Ali Nejad, encouraging men and women to post images on social media of themselves, either wearing white or no head scarf, to protest compulsory hijab. Because of my activism, because I saw a brighter future for women in Iran, I was arrested three times and sent to jail twice. I was beaten up and brutalized during the interrogations and thrown into solitary confinement. These mo moments were the most uh, um, terrifying in my life. I not only felt extreme physical pain, but also real emotional distress. I was released on bail only after being on a hunger strike. The same day, I was arrested and beaten up by Iranian authorities. Three European uh, female politicians came to Iran and obeyed compulsory hijab. On this day, they were, they were uh, complicit in Iran's repression of uh, women while I was condemned to unjust, unjust treatment and brutality. The third time I got arrested, I was on vacation with my nine-year-old son. State, authority, state authorities interrogated me in front of my innocent child and handcuffed me while he was crying, screaming, and begging them to let us go home. That evening in the courthouse, he cried himself to sleep on my lap on a cold stone bench. At that moment, I told myself that I wouldn't let this happen to my family ever again. When Nazrin Sutude, my lawyer, got me out on bail, I immediately fled the country with my son and my tri trial proceeded without me. She was arrested just three days after my trial. Right now, as we, as we sit in this room together in the United Nations, there are too many women in prison who were falsely accused of propaganda against the government and are now serving long prison sentences. The truth is they are just ordinary women like me who were compelled to act based on a vision for a better future in Iran. And it's, it's not just women who share this, this vision. It's also human rights activists protesting execution, child rights activists, labor activists, fighting for better conditions, LGBTQ activists fighting for freedom, environmentalists, students, dual nationals taking hostage by the Iranian governments, and journalists fighting for the basic right to free speech in an, effort, in an effort to expose the Iranian regime, marred by corruption and brutality. We Iranian women want the United Nations, politicians, 
diplomats, uh, diplomats, member of civil society, and the people around the world to hear our voice and to stand in solidarity with us. Rather than enabling our oppressors, we want the United Nations to hold the, to hold the Rouhani's regime account for its uh, malice, its transgression, and its complete and utter uh, disregard for the sanctity of human life. We must use our freedom and our voice to help Iranian women secure theirs. It is harnessing this, po this power that will affect real change. Thank you.